Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com here on our YouTube channel. And this time out, we have another special video up from the great state of New York. We're going back to David SJ's home studio. And in this video, he's gonna show you how he runs his mix in his home studio through a couple of stereo preamps on his master bus to give his mix a little bit of color and a little bit of extra flavor. Some of you guys have asked about, well, what is the first you know, piece of gear I should buy? Um, and we talk about stuff on the master bus. Well, Dave does it with two different types of preamps. He has an API style and an Eve style preamp, and he's gonna show you that in this video. So check out his workflow. It's really, really cool. It will be something that you can implement into your studio pretty quickly and an affordable price. Also in the description box below, there will be a link for you to download the audio file examples that Dave has been so kind to provide us. So you can download it and put those files into your studio and listen back to it on your playback system to get the best uh, results because some of these things are pretty subtle and over YouTube, it, sometimes it's a little difficult to hear some of the subtleties. So go ahead in the description box and download those files. Also check out all of Dave's social media uh, websites as well. He has his own YouTube channel and an Instagram page. So check him out, support him when he has going on over there. So now without further ado, let's go back up to the great state of New York and let's join David SJ in his home studio and check out how he uses stereo preamps on his master bus. Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. Uh, today I'm gonna try to keep a promise that I've been making to you guys and talk a little bit more about my approach to uh, mix bus processing, uh, analog mix bus processing, and what I think has always been a good place to start. Uh, I've talked a lot about how I use a stereo preamp on my mix bus, uh, as opposed to putting a compressor on it right away. Uh, I tend to do most of my mix bus processing, uh, uh, compression and EQ and stuff at the end of a mix rather than mixing into it. Uh, there's, you know, both practices are valid. Top down mixing is perfectly valid and that's how you want to do it. Great. Uh, but personally, I prefer to do that at the end of the mix. But what I do do is I mix into a stereo preamp because I feel like that gives you a lot of that analog vibe, a lot of the space, the width, uh, the depth that it adds, as well as that, you know, that touch of analog compression right from the start. Uh, I use a stereo preamp on the mix bus. So today I'm going to kind of like walk you through the process for doing that and what I feel like it gives to me and let you guys kind of hear what I'm hearing when I do that. Uh, okay. So we're going to get into that. Uh, and, uh, and, basically give you an idea of, of what my philosophy is and then how to apply it into your mixing as, as far as like what could be your, your first analog piece. Okay, so here we are, uh, we're in my DAW uh, and I have uh, the two preamps patched in via my patch bay. Uh, uh, in, the, in the picture, you can see on top is the Warm Audio WA273. That is a Neve style preamp. And then underneath that is the Warm Audio WA412. Uh, in, uh, in, the, in the DAW here, I have, I have the hardware insert plugin right here. Uh, and this top one, this is the Neve. This is coming out three and four of, of my Focusrite and coming back in three and four. And then, then the second one, this is the uh, WA-412, this is the API, and this is coming out five, six, and coming back into five, six of, of, my, in, of, my, uh, of my focus right. Okay, so we'll talk about the Neve first. Uh, the Neve is a two-channel preamp, and it, uh, it has both a line and a microphone input. Uh, and this is very important to keep in mind. Uh, you, when you're sending an uh, say an insert signal out of your out of your uh, interface and into uh, your into your hardware, it's coming out at line level. Okay. So in in the case of the WA two seventy three, it does have a line input as well as a microphone input, which is selectable by one of the buttons uh, that you can see in right in the middle of the frame. There, there are six buttons. Uh, so one of those buttons is for your line or your mic input. There's another in, there's another button on there that's called tone. And what tone does is tone switches in the uh, tone switches in the transformers. 
So because you're trying to get, you know, as much analog as you can in this, of course, I have the tone buttons engaged, okay? Uh, the one on the bottom is the WA-412. That is an API preamp. Now, that is only a mic level preamp. That does not have a line level input. Now, what's important about that is, is that mic level signals are a lot smaller than a line level signal is. So you're sending a line signal output of your from your interface into a mic level input. If you let it come out at zero dB at line level into that, you're absolutely going to be clipping that from the word go. Uh, and you do not want to do that. OK, so if I was to let me go up into into uh, let me go up into OBS a second here and I'm going to mute my DAW audio. OK. The DAW audio is muted. So if I come out this and I leave this at zero, okay, and you watch the meters on, on channel three and four of the WA-412, you'll see what I mean, okay? The DAW audio is muted, so you're not going to hear this, okay? But it's going to be playing out, all right? So what you can see right there is we've already clipped coming back in. Let me put that back to zero, okay? But you can see that it's hitting the red and all the LEDs underneath it are blinking out, which means that's full clip. OK, so you cannot have that. All right. You, you can't do that. You're just going to cook your mix. It's just going to sound terrible. You don't want to do that. OK, so I'm going to go back into OBS and I'm going to reengage my audio. So what I tend to do is I tend to set my output level. But good starting place is minus 12. And in the case of this mix, minus 12 is working. So you send, you send your output level to minus 12. And in this case, I had it at coming back in at plus three so that it was, so that it was gain matched for, for, for listening. So just keep that in mind that when you're setting up your hardware, your hardware send and return to, you, to your preamp, be aware of what your levels are, okay? If you're going into a mic level, you've got to turn it down. I've got this turned down 12 dB to get it into where I want it to be, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? So uh, what we're going to do here next is I am going to just, I'm going to let you guys hear. Wow, I clipped everything. Look at that. Clipped all of it, all right? So yeah, you do not want to do that. You've got to be 100% cognizant of your levels, okay? So what we're going to do is what I have here is I have a, a static mix of a song that everybody is familiar with who's ever watched any of our videos and a lot of the other YouTube videos. Uh, this is a static mix of that song. And what the way I tend to do this is, is I tend to get, you know, like my session prepped up, get all my levels matched, everything else and do a static mix. And at that point, when I'm actually ready to start mixing, that's when I do this. OK, I add my hardware insert right at the beginning so that I'm always mixing into it. OK, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to give you an idea of what it looks like and what it sounds like. OK, so this is I've got both of the insert plugins are at this point disabled. OK, so I'm just going to hit play on it and I'll let you guys hear it. And then I'm going to switch each one in and out. OK, uh, there is going to be some glitch probably when you switch in and out of this, because there usually is when you go to what you're switching hardware in and out, you can sometimes get a little bit of a glitch. So doing a B sometimes doesn't really work out very well. So what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to just print in each one and I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I'm going to do a, another thing where I print in each one. So, and play all three that you can hear. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to hit the, I'm going to hit the play on it. This is, this is dry right now. And then when I hit, when I click that, if there's a check mark, you can see that that the Neve is enabled. You can see that over here where that insert turns white and when it's disabled, it turns brown. OK, so when it's so when I when I enable the API, that bottom one lights up when I enable the Neve one, the top one lights up. OK, so I'm just going to hit play and I'm going to click them in and out a little bit just so you can get see where the meters are hitting and get an idea of where it lands, okay? Here we go. A 
Okay, the uh, 412, the API one might be a little hot for this, but for this demonstration purpose, I'm going to leave it alone. If I was mixing into that, I would probably have that turned down a little more just to give myself a little more headroom. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so basically what, you, what you're hearing there is you're hearing each one in and out and you're seeing that the LEDs are not at all touching the red. Okay. Uh, on the one on top, you can see that the only that the second yellow LED is just lighting occasionally. On the one on the bottom, the top at the top yellow LED is lighting up a little bit harder. So, like I say, that's probably going to be a little hot for this example. But I'm going to leave it alone because it, we're, I'm not mixing, so I'm not going to worry about the gain structure changing as I go into this. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to print in two tracks off of this mix. I'm going to print in a track where it's fully off of the Neve and I'm going to print in a track where it's fully off of the API. I'm going to gain match all three of those and I'm going to put up a little session and I'm just going to be able to switch back and forth between all three of them so that you can hear what each one of those is doing to the mix and kind of you know, like the tonal balance changes and how that changes and why you would pick each one for a particular mix, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of a break here, print those in, and I'll be back. Thanks, guys. Okay, so what I have set up here for you is I have all three mixes. This is the top track, the green. This is the dry mix. The second track in the blue. This is the Neve mix. And then the bottom mix in the red. This is the API mix. These things have all been rendered out. And I have them gain matched between all three of them. And I put auto align on them to make sure that they are all in phase. And if you look at auto align, you'll see that the Neve one is 129 samples off of the original. And the API mix is 130 samples off of the original. So I make sure that they were aligned. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play all the way through the song and I'm going to be switching back and forth between the Neve, the dry mix, the Neve mix, and the API mix. So if you keep an eye on the screen above, you can see when as I hit the, I have the Neve mix and the API mix are muted and the dry mix is not. So if I solo the Neve mix, it'll mute the API, it'll mute the dry mix and highlight the Neve mix. And if I do the same thing with the API mix, it'll do the same thing. It mutes the dry mix and it highlights the API mix. So you'll be able to see pretty easily as I play through it, which one you're hearing. I also have it set up to do a null test at the end, although it's really not going to show anything all that interesting, but I figured I would do it anyway just to show it, okay? So I'm just going to hit play, let it run through, and switch back and forth. Just follow the bouncing ball, and uh, let me know uh, what you think if you're hearing a difference, okay? When I finish playing through it, I'll tell you what I'm hearing, and you can tell. let me know if you're agreeing with me, okay? Ready? Here we go. We're going to start on the dry mix. I know the seasons about to change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. The dead Where will my heart come back to life? I'm alright As I pick up the pieces that I've left in me I'm alright A away from you 
So what I'm hearing there is definitely both of the compressed, uh, both of the uh, uh, preamp tracks, the Neve and the API, are both way more compressed than the dry mix is. Uh, I was hitting the API one especially pretty hard, so there's definitely going to be some more compression in it. Um, what I'm also hearing is, is that both the Neve and the API mixes are definitely wider uh than the dry mix is uh although both the api mix and the neve mix are probably maybe just a touch quieter even though i have them gain matched between all three of them i think they may be a touch quieter because of the compression at least that's what i'm hearing um the neve mix is just a touch warmer than the api mix the api mix tends to be a little bit more mid forward, whereas the Neve mix is a little bit more on the bottom and top. It's a little bit more scooped in the mids. So it's kind of like you have one that's scooped in the mid, scooped down, and the other one that's peaked up a little bit in the mids. Uh, again, it's a very subtle difference between the two of them, but it just makes a huge difference in the overall mix to me uh, as I'm working with it. Um, again, you know, the dry mix sounds very good uh, coming out of this. It's it's very dynamic, uh, but it also, you know, if you're going to run that through a compressor anyway, why not add some more, you know, ambiance to it, add a little bit more grit to it with the, uh, with the transformers. Uh, it just, like I said, it just, to me, it just adds a little bit of that analog thing to it. And why, and because you're mixing into it, then you can actually adjust EQ and stuff. If you want more top end, add more top end. Uh, it's, but it's just the fact that you're getting that width and compression and harmonic distortion from the transformers that you're not getting in the dry mix. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, uh, I am going to just, I'm going to do a real quick, um, null test between both of them. Uh, I have decibel here uh, so that you can see kind of what's going on uh, when I do it. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it's not going to prove much. It's definitely going to prove that the tracks don't null. But uh, it's just also, I think, a little bit. Uh, you're going to kind of hear the differences between the Neve and the API. Because I, I think, I said, as I said, I think the Neve is definitely more scooped and the API is a little bit more mid forward. 
So I'm just going to uh, run through them again and just, you know, uh, sorry about that. I need to show the there. OK, the um, this button right here in the lower left that you can barely see. But as I click that, when that goes blue, that's flipping the that's flipping the polarity on the dry mix track. OK, so let me try that again. So they definitely don't know, but it's pretty much all the way across the board that you're affecting the frequencies. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing again now with the API track. All right. So to me, as opposed to the Neve track, you're hearing less low and high in that and a little bit more mid. So as I said, it's like whichever, which, uh, whichever frequencies are being uh, accented by the preamp, they're the ones that aren't gonna null. So like I said, with the API, you're hearing much more of the mids with that one than you would with the Neve. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to loop in just a section. Hang on a second. I'm going to loop in just a section of vocal and stuff. It's going to get really annoying. Sorry. But we're going to do that. Okay? So let's do that. So that's the Neve. All right, so then we're going to switch over to the API. So like I said, I know that doesn't really prove anything, but it definitely does show that there is a tonal difference between the two preamps that you can actually work with uh, as far as what you're trying to do with your with your mixes. Uh, again, like I say, uh, it is a very subtle uh, effect uh, to listen to just in this way. Uh, I think when you're mixing into it, you hear it a lot more. Uh, I'm hopefully that you guys are listening to this on some decent monitors or headphones that you can hear what I'm hearing. Uh, if you're listening to this on small speakers or an iPhone or anything like that, you're going to hear nothing. Okay. So anybody who jumps in the comments and says, I was listening to my iPhone and I can't hear a difference. I don't want to hear about it because you're not going to hear it. I'm telling you, you know, I'm admitting it. You're not going to hear it. Okay. But again, this is something that is a, is a simple way of adding a lot of analog a lot of analog feel to a mix just on the master bus very simply as i say a lot of times too like i tend to use this as a like a like a stereo analog summing mixer i mean it's basically just running your mix through a couple of transformers and i've said before when you run audio through a mile of copper wire wrapped around an iron core i personally think it sounds better uh, so anyway, I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, I'm going to put, a, I'm going to put the tracks into a, uh, into a, uh, uh, Google drive folder. I'm going to give David the link to put in the video. Uh, if you guys want to download them and check them out, feel free. Okay. I'm going to put them up there for you if you want them. Uh, let me know uh, if you have any questions or anything else in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if you think that I'm completely out of my mind and I'm hearing something that doesn't really exist. If it's a perfectly valid point. It works for me. It may not work for anybody else or it may not work for you. But, 
you know, this is how I like to mix. It's how I like to work. And, and I think it's added a lot to what I do since I started doing this. Okay. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate the support and everything. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.